Hi everyone, welcome to Marika Creations. Today you will join me in my pottery. I will make some ceramic pieces. I'm putting together a few items for uh, a market that I will attend in just a week. So let's get started. First thing I will do is this flower. You can have it as decoration, just standing on a table, or you can put a rod in there and have it uh, like um, in your garden. I have uh, made a slab. Then I take my needle tool and uh, cut out a shape of a petal. And I'm using that first petal as my template for the rest of them so they will look alike and I do as many as I can here I need six petals for one flower and here I am with loads and loads and loads and it's enough for five flowers so I'm taking all the clay that was in between and just put it in a bag and moist it a bit and now I put some slurry on the edges and just smooth them out with my fingertips so they are nice and smooth no harsh edges and I take this wooden dowel and just uh, curve my petal a little bit and it looks like that and I do that with all the petals there on my work table I use some uh, clay that uh, need to be fired in my kiln but if you don't have that this project is so easy and could easily be done with just air dry clay And now to the center of the flower and I just put it on the dowel on the top there a little bit more water to prevent it from cracking later on in the process and then smoothen it out and once done I will just uh, put some dots on it and cut off the excess If you're new to my channel, hi, I am Marika and on this channel I do lots of DIYs, thrifting, decorating, renovation of my home, some pottery, some painting, anything creative really. Please join me, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and let's be friends. Now it's time to put them together and I just take my needle tool and score my pestles on half of them I will score on the front and half of them I will score on the back so six petals for each flower and then I put some slurry some slip on where I have scored and just press them together it will act as a glue to keep the pieces together and then I'm just smoothing out where they are attached so it will be a stronghold and I keep on doing that and as you can see I have uh, every other on the front every other on the back And petal number six will attach to the first petal as well as to the last one and then I'm just smoothing all the edges once more and then it's time to put on the center piece there I score and I slip and attach it and then smoothen out the harsh edges and then I'm just making a coil, a thin little coil and put that as a reinforcement around my centerpiece there. And 
and as soon as it looks nice I will turn it and I will make a hole and on the bottom there so I can put a rod in then I just set it aside to dry and I let it dry for uh, up to a week it depends and it looks like that and now it's just uh, four more to go and here is another project I will make mugs and I lost the footage on how I just cut them out and I have the sides I have the bottoms and I have the handles so the circles the bottoms I will just set aside because I will not use them at this point I will start with the sides of my mugs on the sides of the mugs I will make a pattern and I have um, a piece of lace and also this non-slip protection you put under your rug so I just put it where I want it on my piece and then just take a rolling pin and uh, slightly slightly roll the pattern into the clay and then I just took uh, a needle tool and bevel the edges of uh, the mug next piece I have this lace again but I will also as a background have this non-slip protection mat bevel the edges again that is to more easily put it together later on and once I am done I just put everything aside for a while because it's too soft for the moment to keep on working with it so I needed to stiffen up just a little bit looks like that and meanwhile it's time for the handles and you can do handles many many ways but these are just made from slabs and I just roll this pattern in and I will uh, form it as I want my handle to look like and then I take my exacto knife and uh, cut off the excess in an angle it's much easier to put them together later on so now I have my length and I will cut the other pieces to about the same length I will have the same pattern on all my handles and now it's time for scoring and slipping and put them together smooth and out where they meet and then I put uh, the new handle on top of the other one to just see how large I need it to be, cut off the excess and then do the same thing with the third one and then I just put them aside to rest for a bit as well now it's time to put my mug together score and slip it's still soft but uh, stiff enough to be able to be handled so I just press where I have slipped and score I press the edges together and I take my tool and smoothen the clay out so I have a nice seam turn it upside down make sure it's round and then I score and slip on the bottom there and on my bottom piece and uh, press them together and then it's time to smoothen everything out and uh, make the seam look very nice 
have this uh, old card, uh, gift card that I use, plastic card, to smoothen everything out as well. I turn it right side up and then I take it, a little piece of clay and make it into a coil again and um, just put it on the seam on the inside and smoothen everything out there. Last touches with the, my paintbrush and some slurry to smoothen everything out, make it look nice and then set it aside to rest for a while again. And I do the same thing with all mugs, of course. Score and slip, smoothen the seams, score and slip, put on the bottom, smoothen everything out, coil inside, more smoothing, and now it's time to put on the handles. So scoring, need to do that. And the same on the mug where I need to place my handle. And slipping and smoothing. And then I will make a coil, a very thin one, and put around the handle for reinforcement and just smoothen that out. First with my tools and then also with some slurry and paint brush. As the last touch, I put on my seal, my initials, on the handle. First firing, bisque firing, 1000 degrees Celsius. And uh, once they are out, they are not so delicate to handle. So I take my sandpaper and smoothen all the edges. I don't want anything to be sharp. So I do that with all my pieces and here is a cute little piece, made it into a flower shape. You can just have it at, as decor uh, on your table or hang it on the wall. And here are all my pieces that needs to be glazed and I'm sitting here now and putting on this purple pink stuff. That's the wax that prevents the glaze from attaching to the surfaces I don't want it to attach to. If you would have a glaze on the bottom of your mug there, for example, and you put it in the kiln for firing, it will stick to the kiln shelf and break when you try to pull it off. Then it's time to put on the glazes and here I am with a paintbrush putting on a bronze color on a couple of my flowers just on the edges but it will not be bronze in the end it will uh, because I will put a transparent glaze on top of it and it will turn green where I have the bronze that's the magic of glazes and I also made some hearts with some uh, indent texting on and some uh, patterns and I put this bronze on top there as well and then I take a, a wet sponge and just wipe off the excess and transparent glaze on top of that one as well so I keep on glazing I have loaded the kill and it's time for the glaze firing and um, it's very hard to see what it's going to look like because uh, the glazes before firing and after are very very different closing up the kiln and start the process it will take 11 hours and then a cooling period and the glaze firing will go up to 1230 degrees celsius 
the next day it's time to finish the flowers and look at them they are beautiful and uh, I have uh, some rebars some uh, iron rods that I will use and I will put my flowers on top like that but I will attach them with some silicone adhesive and I thought I wanted this piece of wood to put on my rods in for the market but um, it wouldn't fit in the end and it was uh, a little bit unstable so I decided to go for another solution so I just put in uh, this adhesive in the hole on the bottom and place my iron rod and let them dry for several hours. And here they are, all my beautiful flowers. And I decided to put them in an ice bucket full of sand to make it heavy and stable. What do you think? I think they turned out great. I just love this dark red color and I put black in the center and they turn a bit bluish in certain places. I love it. And the white ones as well. And here is how they might look in a garden. Perfect pop of color within all the greens. And these are my mugs, they turned out like this and I decided for a green and a bronze color for them. They look cute. I will show you a few other things as well, how it turned out. And these are the flowers. I showed you briefly before with the bronze glaze that turned green with a transparent glaze on top of it so you can just have them as they are on on a table you can put something in there another real flower maybe or you can hang them like this love how they turned out as well and have some small hearts that I've written love on same glaze the bronze and the transparent turned green and this mug here was uh, a try out they glazed it in black and a little bit of green and I have a wooden handle on it and it turned out great I love it very rustic and you know I love rustic so if you like this video and videos like this be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button of course for more inspirational videos lots of DIYs and uh, thrift flips on this channel here is a picture and a little wall hanging basket that I put some full succulents in. Create your life, it says. Cute. So tell me what you think. Did you have a favorite of my ceramic pieces? Are they all worthy for the market, you think? Leave me a comment. If you want more inspiration straight away, hit that DIY playlist icon you see on the screen. Thank you so very much for watching. See you soon again in my next one. Until then, take care. Bye.